Hello and welcome to the cute baby tutorials using GIMP. I may do a few things in this video, so if you want to go straight to one of the main sections, then the times they start are shown on your screen now. These videos are also available in higher definition on my website, along with any original files I'm allowed to give you in case you want to work on the same image as me. Just click on the link below. OK, here we go. I've got a choice of two different pictures which I want to use for this tutorial. It's a picture of my son in the bath having a nice time. Here he's got a nice smiley face and he's engaging well with the camera. If you take a look at the second one, well he's not engaging with the camera as much. But at the same time, there aren't all those distracting shampoos and whatnot in the background to take away from it. It's a nicer picture overall. So while he's not grinning at the camera, I'm going to go with this one. OK, here's our file. I'm going to do what I normally do and set up my folder structure. So, go to the Layers palette, click on Folder, double click that and call it Fix. Then I'm going to take my original file, take it, duplicate it, rename it to Base. And then I'm going to take that and drag it into the folder. And there we are. Now, I'm going to duplicate the Base file and rename it to base 02 because there's a couple of things I want to show you in this video. For now, let's just click on the eye icon, make it invisible, and we're going to work on the base layer. Now, very quick and dirty way of doing it, you can go to Colors, Brightness, Contrast. All right, well, it's looking a bit dark, so let's up the brightness. It's looking really great and there's no contrast in there, so we up the contrast and yeah, you're getting some not bad results there. But there is another way of doing this, which gives you just a little bit more control, and that is Colors, the Levels palette. In simple terms, you're seeing a chart of the dark and light pixels of the image. You've got completely dark pixels, or black, down here, and you've got completely light or white pixels at the other end, and you've got everything in between. Now, this graph here shows all the pixels in the image in terms of how bright they are. You can see you've got a few dark pixels down here. It goes along. You've got a, a spike here of some mid-gray pixels. You also have a lot of pixels here. See this narrow peak here? I mean, you've got a lot of colors of a very similar level of brightness. Now that is probably the walls of the bath that are causing that spike there. If you look at this, you can see the problem. If this is the darkest pixels I've got, and this is black, well, it's not dark enough. Same on the other end. This is the lightest amount of pixels we've got here, but that's white. So the lightest we've got is kind of, what, 75% grey, something like that. So that is what we need to fix. We'll take this white triangle here, which shows where the lightest pixels are, and we're going to click and hold and drag it so it just rests just underneath the start point there, and you can see what happens. All of a sudden, you're getting a much lighter image. We'll do the same with the black triangle. Click and drag it. We're saying this is where I want my new black to be, and this is where I want my new white to be. GIMP goes away and does it. Thank you very much. It's looking a bit dark, but you have this extra triangle in the middle. Think of this as a middle tone control. Now I'm going to take this, slide it down towards the black, now I'm giving a greater emphasis onto these lighter pixels here, so the whole image becomes lighter. So we'll go and click on OK, compare that with the original image, much brighter. I'm going to do the same thing again, but I just want to go a little bit further with this. So I will take my Base 2 layer and make it visible, and we'll go back into Levels again. I'm going to do the same thing as before, make that bit dark, make that bit light, and move the overall shift so it's lighter. I said that this was where all the white pixels were. I was lying. Now I'm going to zoom right in on this part, and if, I hope you can see this with the video, just here I've got a tiny little speck of pure white pixels. So where are they? Take a look at these tap reflections here. That is bright white. There is a school of thought which says, well, if you shift the white triangle to the start of the pixels here and the black triangle to the start of the dark pixels here, that should be right. But take a look at that. I've already 
moved it way past these white pixels, it's still looking okay. I'm going to take the white triangle and I'm going to move it some more. Now everything which is to the right of that little triangle is going to be a pure white colour. I can live with that. I want this image to be brighter, so I'm going to cut it in some more. I'm also going to take the black pixels. Well, look, just here, there's just a few pixels now which are deep black, and the overall image is losing a little bit of contrast. So I'm going to move this into the right a bit more. It means there are more pixels which are completely dark or black, but I'm getting a better contrast. Take a look at the image there. I can also adjust the overall contrast using this. I've used my eyes there. I haven't relied on the maths that this graph is showing me. Don't rely on maths. No one's ever looked at a picture like this and said, oh, I can see definitely there's zero values there and there's pure white levels there. People only look at a picture and say, well, it's a good photograph or it's not. I'm going to click on OK. I'm going to compare this with the one I did underneath. That is the original levels adjustment I did. This is the new one. It's looking brighter. Frankly, I think it's looking nicer. The fact that these pixels here, these reflections here, are blown out, well, that doesn't matter to me. That doesn't matter to me at all. What matters to me is the overall image, especially what matters. And when you are checking your levels, check the faces of the people in the photograph. That's the most important thing. I'll show you something here. If I make them both invisible, see this little highlight here? Well, that was white. But now, with my new image, it's gone. <laughs> I can live with that. What matters to me is the face that I'm looking at. That's looking nice. It's a lovely bright picture. I prefer that. Now I'm looking at the image again, now that the layers dialog box is gone, and I'm thinking maybe it could do with being just a little bit more intense in the dark end. So I'll go back. Don't be afraid to see this. Go back several times if you need to. Go back to levels. I'm just going to nudge the darker bits so they're a little bit darker. Way too dark. A little bit darker. What I'm looking at here is the hair. The hair is a very good indicator of whether you're overdoing it or not. There you're getting more detail in the shadows. You're losing a bit of detail in the shadows of the hair there, but you're getting the overall contrast a little bit more intense. There's no hard and fast rules there. You have to judge it. Your eyes tell you what is a good picture. Don't look at the maths. Use your eyes. And I will take the middle level just up a little bit. OK. I'm going to go with that. OK, one thing I'm going to do with this, just to wrap up, I'm going to use something called Unsharp Mask. I, I tend to be rather wary about using it. It's very easy to mess things up. What it does, it's supposed to sharpen up an image that is a little bit blurry. This image is a little bit blurry, especially if you take a look around the silhouette where the nose is against the bath. So I'm going to take that layer, duplicate it, call it Sharp, if I can spell it properly, and I'm going to go to Filters, Enhance, and Sharp Mask. Now. Make the dialog box bigger. If you're doing this, again, focus on the face. The face is the most important part of the photograph. Already I'm getting quite an effect here. If I take off preview, that's the before. This is what it's going to do to it. It's quite intense. It's very easy to mess this up. If I take the radius and make it bigger, you can see I'm getting a more extreme effect there. And the amount is almost nothing at the moment. If I take the amount up, you're going to get some very weird effects there. It's increasing the contrast around the edges. So I'm going to make this much more understated. I'll take the amount up to a fairly extreme level and I'll play with the radius. Get that how I want it. About there. Then you'll do this quite a lot. Take the amount right back to zero so it's not affecting it at all. Then bring the amount up slightly just as far as you think it should go to just get the effect. I'm going to go with that. Click on OK. It's quite subtle, but it's made the image a little bit crisper. Compare it with what I've just done it from. That was our original modified levels base 2. That's it with the Unsharp Mask applied. Use it if you feel you need to. Be very careful of Unsharp Mask, but it is there in case you want it. And I think that just about wraps it up for today. 
Thanks for listening. I hope you got something out of this video. If you did, maybe you consider clicking on one of the links below and check out my game called Disco Baby, which is on the iTunes store or Android stores like Google Play. It has three different games in it, a memory game, a maths game for children, and a dance-along-with-me game for toddlers to join in with. Thanks for your time.